These protesters want to remain British. They're demonstrating on the outskirts of Belfast, despite a police ban. When it comes to Northern Ireland's special status, they feel betrayed by the UK government. We have now got a partition down the Irish Sea, something the, the people in Ulster have fought for for hundreds of years, um, is the remain part of the United Kingdom, and now we find ourselves divided from the United Kingdom with no consent. We're British by blood, by the blood that flows through our veins. But as our position within say the United Kingdom, no, we're no longer part of the United Kingdom, fully part of it, because our constitutional law, laws are made in Brussels now. British symbols are common in Northern Ireland's Protestant-dominated areas. The Red Hand represents one of the many paramilitary organisations. It can be found in traditional working-class neighbourhoods like this one near the port. It's now one of the poorest areas in Northern Ireland. Joel Keyes grew up in a similar area. He knows the paramilitary groups. He wants to feel proud of his Protestant heritage, but he's afraid it could be taken away by Catholics. Um, some people, their loyalty is to the Queen. Sometimes it's the, their British identity. Um, people fly their flags just out of pure you know, love for their identity. It's an expression of who they are. His Catholic neighbours live just next door, behind a high wall. Most of them want a united Ireland. That would be a nightmare for Joel. You've got one group of people who believe that Northern Ireland should be part of a united Ireland. And then you've got one group of people who believe Northern Ireland's British and should remain part of the United Kingdom. Those are fundamentally opposed, you know, ideologies. You can't have both. You're either in one or you're in the other. We make our way to the other side of the wall. In the past, it's seen violent street fighting that claimed over 3,000 lives. One of the dead was the mother of Mary Adams, a Catholic who died in a bomb attack carried out by pro-British Protestant militias. She says she's worried about increasing discontent amongst the Protestants. They're not thinking about anybody else, just themselves. And they've always been like that. It's always been like that. So it's not changing. They're not letting it change. It's always them and they get what they want. But for many Catholics, the united Ireland they have fought for so long is increasingly within reach. Mary's neighbour, who runs a pub, says the Protestants will just have to accept that. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning's good. That's great. great. They can still have their British identity because we still have our Irish identity, although we're still occupied by uh, the British. So, I mean, look, we have lived with it for 100 years. Let them see how they can live with it. Back on the other side, Joel Keyes sees the British as protectors, not occupiers, until recently anyway. Now Prime Minister Boris Johnson's government has allowed goods from Britain to be checked in the port of Belfast. For Joel, that's unforgivable and has to be changed at all costs. Sometimes violence is the thing that you have to do. I'm not saying that we have to do it, I'm not saying that we will have to do it. I'm just saying to ask me to take it off the table, to ask me to categorically rule it out, especially when our political opponents have made very clear that they're not going to take it off the table. It's, it's an unreasonable request. Joel is not alone in his anger. According to polls, over 80% of people in Northern Ireland don't trust the UK government. There are some people who think that um, violence in various forms expresses how serious you are. I know that the vast majority of people in Northern Ireland do not want to see anything like that, but it doesn't take too many people to uh, create a situation in which um, uh, sort of peaceful protests can escalate into something violent. Right now, young Protestants all over Northern Ireland are preparing the annual bonfires to mark a 17th century victory over Catholics. But many fear this year's bonfires could get out of control. There's certainly a sort of perception that our concerns and, and our worries and also our goals and our, and our dreams are kind of ignored um, and we're kind of told to just sit down, be quiet and leave it to the professionals. Don't riot, don't do this. It's, I understand the frustration. Brexit is the biggest threat the Northern Ireland peace process has faced so far. And for the moment, that's about the only thing Catholics and Protestants here agree on.